Let's work on the next notebook, 06 standard library. We'll learn about some of the functions that come with Python in the built-in standard library. So far, all the functions that we used, we had, we could just type the function name and it works. So print is a built-in function that you can just use. There are many other functions that Python provides, which are, comes with a standard installation, but it, they are not there by default. You need to import those functions into your code. So let's learn how to use stuff from the Python standard library. So we'll go to the documentation and we'll learn about Python standard library. So these are all the functions that come with your standard Python installation. You have functions that come in different packages. They're organized by different packages. So if you want to do some mathematical operation, you can say, I have put all those functions in this math module. So if you want to do some advanced mathematical things, you can import this math module and do some mathematical operation. You can see these are all the functions that come with it. So maybe let's try using one of those. So let's say we have this function for computing a square root. Let's see. So we have this function math.square root of x, which will give the square root. So let's see if you want to use it. So if you want to use any function from the math module, we were to say import math. So now we can use any function from the math module. The function name is math.sqrt, and we can say, give me the square root of 100. And we can see the result. Okay, so now we can compute the square root. So sometimes when you need more advanced function, which are not there by default, you can import the particular package and use this. The standard library consists of many packages for simple things like working from mathematical things to doing work with file systems. So if you want to read a file or do some file operation, I want to delete a file, move a file from one place to another, you have functions for that. So you can use Python for doing this. Another good idea for a project that you know one of our past participants did is that they said, my work shared folder is quite messy. There are files which are all over. I want to use Python to organize it. And they basically use Python to go through all the files and based on certain structure, organize them into folders. Great use of Python to help with the work. And again, you can see that it goes on. There's a lot of functions that come with that. So we used the mathematical library. So I want to go back and show you what the, the package contains. So a module, when you import it, it can have some functions. It can also have some constants. So let's say you want to use the value of pi. This package also has some of the constants that are used for doing mathematical operations. So pi is available as you know the value of pi. Instead of defining it manually, you can say, I can just import the value. So if you just want to use pi value, you can say, I can import math. So math is already imported. And I can say my value is math.py. So this is just a variable that comes with your mathematical module. And I can print that. And you can get this. There are sometimes if you import math, that means in your program, you now have all the functions that are available. Sometimes you say, I just want to use one value. I don't want to import everything from mathematical model. So I can just say from math, import pi. That also works. And now I can just refer to pi as pi. Right? I don't need to say math or pi. So there are two syntaxes from importing stuff from a module. You can import the whole module and say module dot the function name, or you can import a specific function and use that. So example of this is we imported math and we could use math or square root. You can also do something like this. From math, import SQRT. If we had done this, now in any in our code, we can just say SQRT of 100. Instead of saying math or SQRT, and this works. Okay, so you'll see both the syntaxes. This one is preferred. If you're just using one or two functions from a module, import them explicitly. This is also fine. So again, people use both the syntax is purely matter of preference. Now we have access to all the mathematical functions. We'll start working on the main problem for today. We want to learn how to compute distances between two coordinates. And we'll do it in many different ways. Let's learn a few concepts before we dive into code for implementing how to compute distances. How do you compute the distance? Well, you can say, I'll assume the Earth is a sphere. And the humans have known this for a long time, that Earth is a sphere, and people over time have figured out what is the radius of Earth. 
and the current best estimate for Earth's radius is approximately 6371 kilometers. So if you assume the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 6371 kilometers, you can now take two coordinates, use spherical geometry, and compute the distance between those. And we'll learn how to do that. So this one is a simplified calculation. Uh, if, you know, if you assume Earth is a sphere, most of the time you get results which have not significant implication on accuracy. But if you are want to do very accurate computation, and we would want to do that since we are doing geographic analysis, we say we know that Earth is not a perfect sphere. We have accurate measurements of Earth's surface through satellites. And now we know for very high precision that Earth is not a sphere. It's closer to an ellipsoid. That means it's slightly flat at the poles. The current best estimate of the this values is done using global positioning system. And the values that we have is that the semi-major axis here. So you have, if you measure Earth at the, the longest point, that is 6378.137 kilometer. And from the center of the Earth to the pole is 6356.752 kilometer. So now if you assume that Earth's surface is an ellipsoid of this shape, and we have two coordinates, how do we compute the distance between those? And that has much more complex mathematical formula, but we'll use Python and some third-party packages to see how we can do this easily. Okay, so we'll work on a problem. We'll pick two coordinates anywhere on the Earth. We'll pick two cities, and we'll compute distance between them first on a sphere, and then later on an ellipsoid. Okay, back in our notebook, how do we compute distance between two coordinates on a sphere? There's a formula called Haver sign formula. This has been implemented a while back, and it uses trigonometry to figure out how do we compute distance along a sphere. The formula is simple enough that you can even implement this in a spreadsheet. I remember one assignment I had when I was working at Google. Some of the folks were working in different teams. They said, we have a spreadsheet of 100,000 coordinates, and I want to compute distance between those two. I have column A and column B, coordinate one, coordinate two. Can you tell us how to compute distance between those two? And I said, oh, you can use Python or QGIS. But okay, they said, we don't have access to any of this. Can we do this in a spreadsheet? And I could just implement this formula in a spreadsheet, the same Haversine formula, and they could just drag the cell and compute the distance. So I wrote a blog post. And again, it just shows that this formula is simple enough. And if you have a pair of coordinates, you can just implement this formula between those two coordinates and compute the distance. So we could do the same thing in Python. So what I did is we wrote a function. So we have a function, Haversine distance give an origin coordinates and destination coordinates, we can say, we'll assume the Earth's radius is 6371 kilometers. So 671,000 meters. And we'll use this formula, which is the well-known Haversine formula to compute the straight line distance along a sphere. And we'll get our answer. So let's see how this function works. We start with two coordinates. So this is, we want to compute the distance between San Francisco and New York. We get the latitude and longitude of both the cities we store them in a tuple. So 37.749 degrees latitude, negative one to 2.49 degree longitude. And same thing for New York. This function expects a tuple of origin coordinates and tuple of destination coordinates. We implement the formula. We are using radius value in meters. So when we compute the distance, that will be in meters. So you have this. And now we can say, give me the Haversine distance between San Francisco and New York coordinates. We'll get the distance in meters, we divide by 1,000 and print that. So according to this formula, the straight line distance from San Francisco to New York, like if you took a flight, this many miles is what you earn in your frequent flyer list. So we could now implement this formula using the built-in mathematical module and compute the distance between those two cities. This is a good estimate, but not perfect because we know Earth is not a perfect sphere. So if you wanted more accurate result, in the next notebook, we'll see how to do this more accurately using an ellipsoidal formula. But for now, we can work with this and say, given two cities, we can now compute the distance between those. One of the things about the Python standard library is that it's not all you know, serious things. There are some fun things hidden in your standard library. One of the things that programmers like to do is when they're bored or when they just want to have some fun, they hide this hidden things into code. And the idea is if you're working with a language or a program, it's fun to discover these hidden things. So I want to show you some fun things with you can do with Python. So with all of your Python installation, 
you have this module called this, which you can import. So try this out. Try importing the this module. Go ahead in your notebook, run this cell. See what happens. You get a poem. And again, this is part of your standard library. It's a very famous poem called Zen of Python. Just talks about Python's philosophy and you know why Python was designed the way it is. But again, it's some of the fun thing that you know not commonly known, but you can go and discover that. Let's do one more. Go and import this module called anti-gravity. So open a new cell and just import anti-gravity, not what you expected, right? If you import this, you get a cartoon. Right? This is a very famous comic XKCD. And this is just saying that you know, Python is so powerful that whatever you want to do, you can just import. If you just want to fly, you can import this anti-gravity module, and you can start flying. So a little joke around. Python and some of the tech culture. But again, this is built into everybody's Python. You know, if you went to a server that has Python and you import anti-gravity, you'll still get this cartoon. So it's crazy. And I will link to some other Easter eggs. If you are curious to find those, go and try this out later on. All right, let's do the exercise where you want to compute the distance between your two cities. 